There's been a lot of talk about clay modeling, virtual clay modeling with the leap motion recently, and because I'm still waiting for, for my development kit, it's only been a year, uh, I figured I would dust off this old, very simple virtual clay modeling application that I last demonstrated like in 2007 in my Wiimote hacking video, uh, and I would instead make it work on the Razer Hydro controllers that I have here right now. Um, the razors are nice for this because they, uh, you can use both hands, obviously. I can deposit material here and remove it with the other hand at the same time. Um, and also because they track your hands in true 3D position and they also track your hands in orientation, which is really useful. So I can just by twisting the handle, I can pick up the space, move it around. I can use either hand to do that. Uh, if I use both hands, I can zoom in or out. I can remove some material over here. Um, so that makes this very uh, makes it very easy to use. Now I'm running this on a 3D TV right now, as you can see, but really only because the big screen is pretty impressive. Uh, I'm not even running it in stereo mode at the moment. Uh, I'm just running it as a big uh, as a big regular 2D display, um, just so it's a bit easier to see in the video. Um, so this program here is really simple. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't even deserve the name virtual clay modeling. It essentially uh, represents uh, a piece of space, like this box here, as, as a 3D volumetric field, where at each point in space you have a density associated with it. So it's pretty much like, uh, like Photoshop in 3D. You just paint, instead of painting color on a 2D canvas, you're painting material on a 3D canvas. So I can add material by pressing a button. I can use the other hand to subtract material at the same time. Uh, and what we are seeing here is just the boundary surface of the material that I deposit. And the nice thing about such an approach, um, representing things as a 3D volume as opposed to a surface, is, for example, that it's really easy to change topology. I can just dig a hole through here uh, and turn it from a topological sphere into a donut, uh, which is something that is normally really hard to, hard to represent. But here I just you know, put the hole through there and I have a donut um, because uh, it is a level set after all, so I can change the topology of the surface uh, in a very easy manner. So the basic editing operations are just that I can, as I already said, I can use these yellow paint brushes which are attached to my hands. Uh, to currently with the right hand, I deposit material. Uh, I can just you know put something new over here. Uh, with the left hand, I'm currently taking material away. I can change that by just selecting different modes and those buttons down there. But I also have two other tools. Um, so the just the additive and subtractive painting which I'm showing here. But then we have this smoothing filter which technically speaking is a diffusion filter, but what it boils down to is uh, it just smooths the surface. So I can just, uh, it's time dependent, so I have to move pretty fast, otherwise I'm going to smooth way too much. Uh, I can just drag the, the sphere with the smoothing filter over here. So here I did some pretty rough carving and can just smooth that out really nicely, as you can see. So now we're getting a pretty decent shape like that. Um, so that's one of them. Uh, then the other one is a, is a dragging operation, which is not a diffusion, but an advection filter. So what it means is I can grab a piece of the surface like this corner here, and just by pulling on the handle, I can kind of pull that out. It's almost like working putty with your fingers, uh, almost. Um, so with that, I can do a little, I can hold, I can pull out material, I can put like a, like a scratch into the material by just pulling it along uh, tangential to the surface, like here, or I can just pull it out, and the uh, the nice thing about the Hydra controllers is um, that, as I mentioned, they are tracking my hands in position and orientation. So I can't just drag things out uh, by laterally, but I can also twist them as I go. So I can make these sort of spiral shapes very easily. I just have to rotate my hand and then pull and rotate this way. And you see I'm making this, making this helical shape almost. It's not really particularly artistically useful. Uh, but this model is not because I have two left hands. But the idea is you, you, can, you can work with that, which makes it really quite, uh, quite a powerful input device for this kind of modeling, if you are any good at modeling, which I'm obviously not. Uh, so the, the reason why I'm pulling that out right now uh, is not just because uh, I just saw another video about kind of clay modeling with the, with the Leap prototype on YouTube the other day, but also because this program, even though, again, it's fairly old, uh, I have never publicly released it, and I just decided to make it part of the official uh, example programs for the VUI VR toolkit. So as of just now, uh, you can, you can uh, download the newest version of the VUI toolkit, which is 2.7-001, um, and, uh, and this is going to be a part of the bundled example programs. So you can run that, you can run it on your desktop, on your laptop, 
uh, using a mouse and keyboard, which is really, really hard, uh, unsurprisingly. Um, or you can, you know, if you have Hydras, uh, you can use those. Uh, you can just, uh, let's see, I can pull out some hair here. Uh, you can use those. If you have an actual VR environment, of course, you can use that, um, depending if you have one, of course. So let me zoom in. Actually, I'm going to make this ball a little bit smaller. So we can now see, we can put in some eye holes here and make a face. Again, I'm not artistically inclined, so this is going to look like a very, very rough face, but I'm just having fun here. Zooming in, make a nose, let's see, it goes about there. I'm just going to use a dragging tool to pull out the nose. Here we go, it looks pretty good. Uh, let's put a mouth on that. For that, I'm going to use my right hand. Actually, I'm just going to flip hands. I'm right-handed. I would have a really hard time doing this. Uh, now, of course, all the buttons are flipped. Okay, that was not a good idea. Um, I'm going to do it still with the right hand. My left hand is even more useless than my right hand. Let's see. I'm going to zoom out and carve right here. Put that on there. I should mention uh, I'm not running the 3D TV in 3D mode, so I'm not actually really seeing this in 3D, which is, makes the program a lot less useful, but it's otherwise, unfortunately, pretty hard to film. Um, so I decided to just show it in, in mono mode and also to be quite honest about what the problems are if you're running this in mono mode. Let's put some nostrils in here. I should mention that uh, the program here uh, is, uh, is fixed resolution, meaning that the volumetric grid is represented as a fixed resolution of currently 256 by 256, uh, by 256 voxels. You can change that. But uh, I decided that this would be a pretty good resolution to, to show. Otherwise, it's even more obvious how bad I am at this. Um, let's see, I can maybe make some teeth here. Um, so you are running into the limits of the resolution here with the nostrils I put in there. Uh, that's the resolution limit. So here I'm going to zoom out a little bit, make this thing a bit bigger. So I can maybe pull on some teeth, let's see. Yeah, well, okay, ah, that's really awful. Uh, let's see if I can make some ears at least. Uh, that should be easier. I'm just going to grab a bit of material here, pull it out, pull it to the sides, push it back. There we go, not so shabby. Well, actually, it is shabby. Let's not fool ourselves. So I'm hoping that someone who is a bit more artistically inclined than I am, uh, I went into computer science for a reason, uh, can maybe want to download the software and see if they can actually make something with it. I would very much like to see that. 